Hey, welcome back to Subbrief's Naval News. I hope you're having a great week. Today's topic is going to be unmanned aerial vehicles and some of the unmanned combat aerial vehicles that the United States has uh, have in development for you. Let's begin with the MQ-25. This is the Naval Aviation Tanker unmanned aerial vehicle that's going to operate in the Navy around 2026. She's in testing right now. She's on board, been on board carriers on and off uh, for a year or two now. And she's just getting uh, a lot of the kinks worked out and how she's going to operate with our squadrons full time. Uh, pretty capable tanker. I mean, she's carrying you know, 15,000 pounds of aviation fuel and has a range of 500 nautical miles around the carrier. She can operate in that envelope. Now, Admiral Shoemaker did let slip in an interview recently that the range is closer to 700 nautical mile range, but that's not an official statement. Uh, officially, it's 500 nautical miles, but tip of the hat to the hey we all make mistakes right i've said a few things too right uh in 2022 uh, the naval did the navy established its first unmanned uh, aerial squadron the the vuq 10 and they're going to open up two more for the east coast as well eventually whenever these start to come online the current one that they have is supports the pacific is based out of south california and we will see the mq 25 full-time fully integrated on our carrier fleets in 2026 some of the older uh, stuff that had been uh, prototyped was the Boeing X-45. You might have heard about this. This one's been around for a couple years. It has stealth properties, an internal bomb bay, and uh, the Admiral here said, and I quote, holds a couple of bombs. So this is a, essentially a uh, UCAV that carries a couple of, say, 500-pound bombs, but doesn't have any self-defense capability. I'm talking about ECM, chair flap, chair flap chaff flare and doesn't have any kind of air to air missile or anti-radiation missile and because of those limitations it was canceled in its prototype phase but the lessons learned from boeing in this program were moved forward to to the next product one that was made in parallel or tested in parallel was the northrop grumman x47 alpha and again, this one was uh, had very similar characteristics uh, in terms of stealth and payload, a little bit longer range, I believe, but it was, again, stopped in the prototype phase. So what is going on right now if these programs have been stopped? Well, one program that has my attention right now, this looks very promising, is this Valkyrie. This is, again, a prototype. It's a 2,500 nautical mile range aircraft that has high subsonic speed, stealth features, internal and external weapon pylons, and you can break this thing down and put it all in one 40-foot shipping cargo container and ship it anywhere in the world. And I think that's its greatest feature, in my opinion. The logistics of this thing is very good, very convenient to move around to any kind of battlefield location because in future warfare with drone attrition we could see a high loss rate and the ability to bring more to the front quickly is a big asset and that's what this thing has keep an eye out for the valkyrie in the future so other programs that are going on are called black projects they're not public i can't even look at the budgets of these but typically phantom works which is boeing's uh secret program and skunk works which is kind of the famous lockheed martin uh program uh both have you have development projects that are not public. They could be completely operational too. There's a good chance that that's the case. But besides that, they're definitely developing UCAV capability and we have absolutely no information on that. But we do have new information on a NATO country that has UCAV capability, and they just commissioned the mothership. This is Turkey, and big credit to navalnews.com, and a shout out to my friend Tefan Osbrecht, who's the journalist over there who wrote this story. I will link his story in the description. I would encourage you all to click the link and go read it. He goes into far more detail than what I'm going to share with you today about the TCG and Adula. The mothership of the Turkish fleet was commissioned this week, April 10th, 2023. This is a landing helicopter dock ship or an LHD. She's 231 meters long, 32 meters of beam or wide, and uh, displaces over 27,000 tons. She's a big girl. And because of that, her top speed is only about 21 knots. And that, I think, is a bit of a limitation. But it's also just the public number. It might actually be a little bit higher than that. And uh, at that speed, she has a range of uh, 9,000 nautical miles before needing to be refueled because she's conventionally driven. And so that's, that's a good long range. Uh, for, for any ship. Now, what does she carry? Well, she carries 21 different types of helicopters and 12 manned or unmanned combat aerial vehicles. Yeah, so she could essentially have a squadron of UCAVs 
on board her as she does her mission and uh, no pilots in sight other than the helicopter pilots should they choose to do that this is a new capability there is no other ship that i'm aware of that can have a whole squadron of combat aerial vehicles flying off of its helicopter like deck and the combat aerial vehicles the ucavs that we're going to talk about here in a second all land with uh, arrestor hooks and arrestor wires much like the united states traps our warships our warplanes on our carriers so they have that same system. So it also in that dock that's really big right there uh, can hold 13 tanks and 27 amphib vehicles and six armored personnel carriers and 33 light and heavy vehicles. This thing is like a parking garage for an army base. It's crazy. Uh, there's also room for 15 trailers, which is good for the supplies and equipment and uh, maintenance materials that, that would accompany such a large landing force. And there's room for landing craft to move personnel from ship to shore. This ship is uh, you know, it's it's an all-in-one. It can protect itself from the air, and it can deploy amphibious troops ashore. Good capability. Very similar to our own LHDs, but this is going to be the flagship of the Turkish fleet as of April 10th, as of this year. So, what are some of the U, UCAVs that are on this? The first one is uh, the TB3 UCAV. This is basically the naval version of the already combat-tested TB2 UCAV. So, this is just going to have the arrestor gear and the ability to uh, land on board this ship. It's a 14-meter wingspan and uh, 8 meters long. To give you an idea how big it is, 2.6 meters tall, has a cruising speed of about 125 knots and a max speed of 160 knots. So a, a good envelope of, of, of performance there. She can carry 280 kilogram weapon payload. And the big thing is she can operate in excess of 24 hours airborne. This thing has long endurance. So it can sit up and loiter, you know, in theater for as long as it needs to and uh, carry ordnance and sensors over the battlefield. She has beyond line of sight control, so she does not need to be within sight of the fleet. That would imply uh, satellite communication um, or some sort of network communication to, to control her. And her first flight is scheduled from the deck of the ship in uh, 2024. So we should see them uh, be operational, I believe, that same year. I don't know if they're going to have a whole squadron of these, but it would be really impressive if they did to have uh, the first essentially UCAV carrier out there conducting operations. And, uh, you know, thankfully it's a NATO member doing it and not someone else. Uh, the second one, which I, in my opinion, is a little more advanced, is uh, the UCAV called Kizzle Elma, which sounds like Snoop Dogg's name in drones now. You know, Kizzle. It, it translates to red apple. So because I'm probably saying it wrong, I'm just going to call it the red apple. And uh, this UCAV has autonomous takeoff and landing capability, just like the TB3 has. It has a low radar cross section, high maneuverability, beyond line of sight control as well. And the big asset that this brings is the ASA radar, which can be very powerful and very precise uh, and give back, you know, a good quality picture to, to the operators just as an ISR, as well as enhancing its combat capability. ASA radars are the best and this one has it. It has an internal weapons base so that it maintains its low radar cross section. And its first flight is scheduled to be from the deck of this LHD, the flagship of the Turkish fleet in 2025. So a big tip of the hat to uh, Turkey. This is a great capability. And they also have a very strong uh, unmanned um, sea or sur surface vessel fleet as well. We can cover that in future videos if you want, but Turkey is all over the unmanned vehicles and they are leading the way for the NATO nations in my opinion. Well done to them and well done to Tafon for a great story. Make sure you click the link to navalnews.com in the description and read more about this capability. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Hashtag Sheriff Laugh on socials. Look me up on Twitter at Subbrief. Email me, Aaron, at Subbrief. Tens of thousands of people watch this and nobody ever calls.